welcome today to episode 4. Today we read from Luke chapter 19 and we see that hospitality is the key to life. In Luke 19, we hear the story of Zacchaeus and we see the importance of both offering and receiving hospitality. Do you have your Bible? If you do, great. Turn with me to Luke chapter 19. If not, push pause and grab your Bible and we will read. So I'm reading from Luke chapter 19. I'm reading verses 1 to 10 and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He's gone to the, be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. That's Luke chapter 19 verses 1 to 10. Today we hear what some would call the scandal of the gospel. What Jesus teaches is often scandalous in that it figuratively turns upside down and inside out our thinking. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus includes all kinds of people in God's kingdom that some try to exclude. And in today's Gospel story, Jesus turns upside down our thinking about what is important. This story is the last encounter that Jesus has before heading into Jerusalem. So Luke has it framed for us things. It's somewhat of a bookend to tell us what's important. So we have to pay attention. And it also happens just before Jesus literally turns upside down the tables in the temple. So there are lots of things being turned the right way up in Luke's gospel. Might appear upside down to us, but to God and to Jesus, they are the right way up. And today's story in Luke 19 is almost a repeat of the story in Luke chapter 18, just before today, where Jesus tells the rich young man to sell all his things and to give his money to the poor. Today, though, Zacchaeus offers to do this rather than even being asked to do it. The theme that runs through today's reading and the rich young ruler is what our theologians call God's preference for the poor. Now this isn't to say that God likes people to be poor, but rather that God wants things to be shared so that we all have what we need. Hence God's preference for those who can't provide for themselves, to see that they are provided for, to see that they are cared for. Now we're all created and loved by God, and God asks us to love and care for each of God's creations. And the story of Zacchaeus and the rich young ruler, we see that that means, in these two cases, giving away all we have to God. When we give away our money, we give away our status. We give away our power. Because there's tremendous power in money. And Zacchaeus was giving all of that away. He was giving away his money, 
his status, his vocation. Uh, this week I caught a story by Radio New Zealand um, on their website. And it told the story about a finance company that was charging up to 803% interest. Yeah, yeah, that's right, 803% interest. So, for example, if I borrowed $100, uh, by the time I paid it back, I would have paid them $803, or eight times what you've borrowed. Uh, the government have come out and said that that's wrong, that that's wrong for the company to do this. And they have to repay the money to the people who borrowed it. But other than repaying what was aggressively acquired, there's no actual reparation. There's no consequence for what they did wrong. There's no sense that they might have to pay any form of compensation to the people that they've taken disadvantage of. This story, I think, clearly shows us, even today, how the most vulnerable are taken advantage of. Those in power often wield a lot of power over others. And unfortunately, in this story um, that I saw on Radio New Zealand, um, the wrong that was done didn't have to be addressed in any substantial way. Our economic systems have a tendency at times to rob from those at the bottom and defraud from them to benefit those on top. I think another area which we clearly see that in New Zealand is in housing, where there's what we call generational poverty amongst those who cannot and will never be able to afford housing. Some people make massive profits out of housing, and this negatively impacts those at the bottom. Um, Zacchaeus, in his day, the problem was the tax system. And the problem with the tax system is that it was tied in with the brutal occupiers, uh, the Roman army, who occupied the land. They'd taken the land by force, and now through violence and threat of violence, they literally controlled people's lives. And the Roman tax system was another way of controlling people's lives. Um, their tax system was nothing like the New Zealand tax system, where we pay taxes so that all may benefit. And the benefit in the Roman tax system was to the Roman um, army. So Zacchaeus, I guess in one sense, robbed money from people to give it to the Romans. And that kept him in an amazingly wealthy lifestyle too. So he was not liked by most people, and he wasn't welcomed. In one sense, he was symbolic of everything that was wrong in the Roman system that oppressed people. Jesus, though, in today's story, sees an opportunity. And he invites himself into the oppressor's home. He asks Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, will you offer me hospitality? And like any good Jew would offer hospitality, Zacchaeus offers hospitality. Maybe Zacchaeus wasn't Jewish himself. All good Jews like Abraham would offer hospitality to others. Jesus has turned this interaction between himself and Zacchaeus upside down as he goes to Zacchaeus' house. He unravels the crowd's expectations. Uh, Zacchaeus was seen to be an oppressor and a sinner. And the crowd snicker when Jesus goes to him, go to his house. Surely he was an unsuitable Jewish host for Jesus. But no, Jesus invites Zacchaeus himself into the Jewish community to be part of Abraham's family. Jesus invites Zacchaeus to belong to God's people. And Zacchaeus responds with amazing generosity, ultimately sharing all of his resources. You might say he shows us a holy and a joyful unravelling of his life. The story of Zacchaeus also shows us that if we want to be part of God's kingdom, when we do wrong, then we have to address our wrongs in a substantial way. 
The story tells us that Zacchaeus gives half of his money away to the poor. And then he repays four times over any money he has falsely taken. And we're told he's very wealthy. One assumes that there's been a lot of money that's been falsely taken. That makes you think, doesn't it? He's taken some money falsely and he's offered to put things right in a substantial way. And that righting his wrong would have almost certainly bankrupted him. He would have run out of money and had none left over. And Jesus' response to him was this. Today you and your family have been saved because you are a true son of Abraham. The Son of Man came to look for and to save people who are lost. So what is a true son of Abraham? A true son is someone who lives God's ways, who lives God's covenant, and most importantly, someone who offers hospitality to strangers. Jesus was able to eat with Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus is now offering hospitality to the poor and those he has wronged. I mean, wow! The promise to Abraham was that Abraham would be the father of a great nation, with many descendants, just like the stars. And here is Zacchaeus, becoming one of those descendants, one of those stars, offering hospitality like Abraham offered and received. Zacchaeus is now within God's family, through his actions, where he includes and he has included himself. Here is the tax collector. His life, his vocation, his identity are radically unravelling. And he's given a new identity as one of Abraham's children. And that unravelling begins with Jesus offering welcome and a place. And then Zacchaeus offering hospitality to Jesus. And then at Zacchaeus, extending that hospitality even further. So what has unravelled or is unravelling? Zacchaeus' vocation and identity are unravelling. Zacchaeus' complicity in the oppressive economic system of the Romans is unravelling. Zacchaeus' greed unravels into radical generosity. And the crowd's expectations are also unravelling of who is worthy, and of course who isn't. As we close today, um, Jesus offered the sinner, the tax collector, a place. And we see in Zacchaeus that there's a place in God's kingdom for you, for me, for anyone and everyone. Jesus wishes to offer us all a place. And it's only after we've accepted that place that we can change. The story of Zacchaeus shows us that your role and my role is to make the offer of hospitality. You, me, the person beside us, we don't need to be right with God to come to God. Rather, we come first, and in coming to God, and receiving God's hospitality, we are made right. As we receive God's welcome in God's place, like Zacchaeus, this transforms us into God's generous people. And for some of us, whose story is the same as Zacchaeus, this will mean that entire communities are transformed. The salvation offered to Zacchaeus also meant salvation to all of those oppressed by him. His salvation not only had a personal outcome for him, but it had a positive outcome for those who were affected by him. This is in part why God offers grace to all of us. Because God knows that when we receive this grace, it will change us. Our ideas and our thoughts unravel. 
and the Holy Spirit is then able to guide us into God's thoughts and God's ways. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your prompting, your nudging, and your guiding in our life. May you point out to us what it is that needs to unravel in our life, so that we may follow your way more fully. May you put the right people around us to support and guide us as our road twists and turns. Please continue to be our faithful guide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So time to dive a little bit deeper and to think about this ourselves. Have a look down below and you'll find some questions. So they're all written down there, but I'll, I'll read them out as, as well. Um, you might like to push pause as you go along so you can just um, think, I, I wonder what that means for me. So some questions. Um, let's think about the story just for a moment. Why does Zacchaeus anticipate Jesus' arrival. It seems that he's been waiting for Jesus. What makes him believe that Jesus might show mercy to a tax collector? If you read back earlier in the story, you'll actually find an answer to that. You'll discover in Luke 5 verses 27 to 32 this. Later Jesus went out and saw a tax collector named Levi, sitting at the place for paying taxes. Jesus said to him, Come with me. Levi left everything and went with Jesus. In his home, Levi gave a big dinner for Jesus. Many tax collectors and other guests were also there. The Pharisees and some of their teachers of the law of Moses grumbled to Jesus' disciples, Why do you eat and drink with those tax collectors and other sinners? It seems that Jesus had a, a habit of talking with tax collectors. I mean, one of his disciples, Matthew or Levi, was a tax collector. Then further on in Luke's Gospel in chapter 7 verse 34. But because the Son of Man goes around eating and drinking, you say, Jesus eats and drinks too much. He's even a friend of tax collectors and sinners. So you get the tax collectors line here. It's a theme that, that comes up. They were a group of people that were really despised in Jesus' day. Uh, today we might call them the loan sharks. This is Luke 18 verses 9 to 14. Jesus told a story to some people who thought they were better than others and who looked down on everyone else. Two men went into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood over by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not greedy and dishonest and unfaithful in marriage like other people. And I'm really glad that I am not like this tax collector over there. I go without eating for two weeks a day, and I give you one tenth of all I earn. The tax collector stood off at a distance and did not think he was good enough, even to look up towards heaven. He was so sorry for what he had done. Then he pounded his chest and prayed, God, have pity on me. I am such a sinner. Then Jesus said, when the two men went home, it was a tax collector and not the Pharisee who was pleasing to God. If you put yourself above others, you'll be put down. But if you humble yourself, you will be honoured. Jesus answered, healthy people don't need a doctor, but sick people do. I didn't come to invite good people to turn to God. I come, I came to invite sinners. So that's Luke 18, 19 to 14. That's the one on prayer. Um, the next one is the rich young ruler. That's Luke 18, 19 to 30. An important man asked Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, Why do you call me good? Only God is good. You know the commandments. Be faithful in marriage. Do not murder. Do not steal. 
Do not tell lies about others. Respect your father and mother. And he told Jesus, I have obeyed all these commandments since I was a young man. When Jesus heard this, he said, There is one thing you still need to do. Go and sell everything you own. Give the money to the poor and you'll have riches in heaven. Then come and be my follower. When the man heard this, he was sad because he was very rich. Jesus saw how sad the man was, so he said, It's terribly hard for rich people to get into God's kingdom. In fact, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to get into God's kingdom. When the crowd heard this, they asked, Well, how can anyone ever be saved? Jesus replied, There are some things that people cannot do, but God can do anything. And Peter said to Jesus, Remember, we left everything to be your followers. And Jesus answered, You can be sure that anyone who gives up home or wife or brothers or family or children because of God's kingdom will be given much more in this life and in the future world they will have eternal life. So why did Zacchaeus think that Jesus might welcome him? Well, Jesus had this long track record of talking to sinners, of talking to tax collectors who were seen as sinners, and saying, you know, you're welcome. Change your ways. Come follow me. I can offer you a better way. Our next question. Um, according to Jewish law, restitution was required when paying back the original funds um, plus one-fifth more. Uh, you'll find that in Leviticus um, chapter 6 verse um, 5 and Numbers chapter 5 verse 7. So what does it mean then that Zacchaeus offers to repay those who he has defrauded four times more than what he took? I wonder what converts his greed into radical generosity. Thinking of ourselves for a moment. How might we too unravel our finances and our spending practices from systems that oppress and defraud others? What would it look like to transform our own greed into generosity? Has COVID-19 taught you in any way to examine your own finances? Lots to think about. And now next week. Next week we will be looking at Pharaoh and how he hardens his heart to Moses' request to let the people go. So Pharaoh next week, we look at him in Exodus and how he hardens his heart to people. Um, for now, a blessing as we close. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression and the exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom and peace. And may God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world, so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessing of God who creates, redeems and sanctifies be upon you and all who you love and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. See you next week.